Choose life and leave. Buy original. Be original. S O N. False declaration of goods, amongst others, has been identified as a major problem, injuring the speedy clearance of goods at the various nation spots. What are reasons for this unpatriotic and illegal act? Who are those responsible for this act of insincerity? What are the various agencies of government, like the Standards Organization of Nigeria, doing to deal with offenders? In this special edition of the program, we shall attempt to examine this ugly trend with a view to demystifying the selfish act, as well as uncovering those suspected to be behind it. It's Standard and You, and I welcome you to the program. Please sit back, relax, and enjoy every bit of this week's edition of the program. My name is Ifoma Okonko. Standard and You, and nice to have you on the program. Don't forget that Standard and You comes to you on the station at this time every Monday. Moving on. Nigerians have continued to contend with the prevalence of substandard products in the country. These goods are imported into the nation from other parts of the world, despite efforts by the various government agencies at the ports. False declaration of goods by importers has been identified as a major problem faced by these agencies to stem the tide of substandard goods in Nigeria. Standard and New takes a holistic look at the activities of the SON Sports and Border Directorate against the backdrop of its renewed strategy to tackling the menace of substandard and fake products in Nigeria. Please take a look. It is a known fact today that Nigeria is an import-dependent economy with more than 80% of domestic goods imported into the country. This development has had negative implications on the country with successive governments making efforts to diversify the nation's economy. The development of a viable non-oil sector has become imperative to facilitate a rapid industrial growth. Thousands of goods, especially household products, are imported into the country. Apart from food, some kind of chemicals and drugs, most products regulated by the Standards Organization of Nigeria go through clearance procedures to ascertain their quality and standard. The SON Sports and Border Division performs that function as explained by the head of the department. Son is engaged, have, okay, son has access to the single window that has been managed by custom, which we call the NICES, Nigerian Integrated Custom Information Service. So on the NICES, since SON is already integrated, we are able to see all importation that comes into the country. Now we see the documentation that are uploaded, that are declared by the importers on the NICES. So whatever you are bringing into the country, we can monitor it, you can see it and monitor. Yeah, because the declaration are positioned there in the NICES. So we can see it, your documentation. The only difference now is to be able to marry the information there and the physical information we can see on ground when we are invited for examination in the port. That is the only way we can complete the cycle. You have a documentation, you have declared that, okay, you are bringing tire. We have seen that, okay, maybe you have some car certificate. You have provided all the information that are necessary. But is that what you have on ground? By the time we are able to see what is physically on ground and marry it with your documentation, the cycle is complete. And if you meet all the requirements, the goods are released. But here we are, some has no access to the port immediately, unless where we are invited by the customs. We have the field inspectorate arm of the post and border office that enters the port for examination. If they are not invited by customs, some cannot go in for examination. Even though we have seen the declaration, but it is not enough for us to complete our work without seeing what is on ground physically. 
Before a product is imported into the country, such good must be registered with the SON for traceability and inspected at the country of manufacture by the SON Inspection Agency. This is done in line with the Agency Standards Organization of Nigeria Conformity Assessment Program's SUNCAP procedure. At the par level, for instance, if you say you are bringing tire, at the par level, you now submit an information that you are bringing tire rim, for instance. And the, at the SGD level, you now submit that you are bringing in NAVDAC product. Now, this is a case of false declaration because you have been able to manipulate the system to bring in another good which you do not declare in the first place. The PAR is pre-arrival assessment report. Pre-arrival. And by pre-arrival, you are informing the customs that so, so so and so import is about to arrive. You are sending documentation ahead of the arrival of the consignment to inform the custom that your good is on its way. And here are the information. That is the PAR level. Now, at the SGD level, that is a single good declaration. You are already informing the customer again on the platform that your goods have arrived. And this is the content of that good. So you have the first information on the PAR, and you have the second information on the SGD. So this is where the problem comes. Between the PAR and the SGD, you can have some manipulation. What it means is that some unscrupulous importers declare a particular product and bring into the country another product. A situation which engineer Yahya Bukase stalls the process of clearance of goods significantly. There are situations where you submit NAVDA, but this one that I'm working on, the person submitted some product certificate for Form M. Now, after obtaining the Form M and having access to Forex, the person now went ahead to import a different product. He imported magnesium product that is not controlled by, by sun. They call it manitol. Manitol. That was where the person imported. So he submitted at the par level that information that he's bringing in manitol. And then at the SGD level, the person still maintained that he was bringing in the manitol. But at Form M level, he submitted that he was bringing in a remote control, which is some regulated product. So we became suspicious of the consignment that this importer is bringing. So what we had to do was to flag it down and place it on hold. Now, when my people now went for examination, because fortunately, that consignment was placed on hold. But at the point of examination, it was a NAVDAC product. Now, by the time Sun is holding NAVDAC product, what will people say? People will say, why are you encroaching into NAVDAC? But they didn't know that there was a false information at the Form M level, which this person said he was bringing in some product. But at the end, it was NAVDAC product he brought. In most cases, the customs licensed clearing agents abandon the consignment at the ports, thereby leading to congestion of the seaports. Because here, we don't want to go beyond 24 hours to refer your matter to uh, compliance. As soon as we see at the point of examination that there is a deviation, we're already writing to compliance that this person is placed on hold. That an information has been sent to customs to place the container on hold. Because on daily basis, you are going to have them. In fact, in a week, we we'll have it into thousand. Because because of false declaration, so many things. You find a product that does not have a country of origin. Meanwhile, in your document, you say this product is coming from China, for instance. And physically, the product does not have country of origin. Now, sometimes I discuss with them. It's like when you go abroad and someone is asking you. Where are you coming from? Or maybe your passport does not carry your country of, of origin. 
how do they identify you that you are actually coming from a particular country? So when a product does not have a country of origin, somebody will not be arguing. How can you say this product, this product when it is actually on my document that it is coming from China? But this document is not accompanying this product into the market. So if a customer is not satisfied with a particular product, and he identifies that that product is coming from a particular country, and again and again is having that information that product from this particular country is not functioning, he runs away. You have given him information to move away from the product coming from that country. But where you are not putting any country of origin on the product, how does he trace it to where it is coming from? So, country of origin, as far as it's so simple that it's concerned, it's a matter of that defined quality of a product. So, we have so many instances that at this level, we don't want to hold any container for God. The port regulation is that over 48 hours, a container should be cleared. So as soon as we see the infraction, we refer the matter to compliance for action. And as soon as we are writing to compliance, compliance are putting their machinery ready, waiting for the importer or the clearing agent to come and say, we want to carry this our container that has been placed on hold. If they don't come, that is the only gap that we have. Then we'll tell you, this is what you have committed. What do I do? We say, already your information is with compliance. So we now direct him to compliance. Already his formation is there waiting for him to come. Then they will now go together with the compliance unit to the to the port, to the terminal. You arrange for his container to be carried. And as soon as it's coming out, compliance will now escort him to the warehouse. Even the unhold letter that was sent to custom, some of them are not affected. So when we wait for like three days, two days, we don't see them come back. We send all their information to compliance. And those information are there. They don't come back. The things that Saul is, it is this level of compliance and not having sun cap. Most of the, almost 10% of the imports, which is regulated, do not have sun cap. And where even some of them have sun cap, you see a situation where somebody is bringing in say telephone and his sun cap is reading another thing and these are the things that SON will not allow you to leave the port so basically what we need is level of uh, compliance education telling the trading community that you need to comply however there is this complaint I, I took my time to say why is it that you who are running away from sun cap they say sun cap is you know it's an offshore document but which was obtained abroad by the trader so perhaps maybe the trading committee needs to be sensitized about the issue of compliance. It is when you comply that some will be able to deliver on the, most of their uh, objectives. And that each, if you have say five, seven products that you are importing, you must obtain your sun cap for those seven products. The original concept of sun cap is to facilitate trade. They want to ease your process of moving cargo out of the ports. And continuously, so and keep on making further efforts. When you bring in some of these products that are of low quality and all that, they still move further to allow you to move the cargo to the owner's warehouse and while they conclude their transaction. So I don't know, most times people talk about the default charge. It should be thankful that uh, you are asked to pay the default charge because the law is very clear that such cargo be seized. But they have been making a lot of effort by coming from a war of corrective measures. I can tell you, for instance, if you have a product, let's say a cable, and the millimeter is, say, 20, okay? <laughs> you saw, but you now mark it to be 50. You have deceived the, the end users. So when you run into a SON in that kind of order, you made a false declaration. <laughs> You've breached the law. But they still go further. And that's why they say, okay, let's see what, what we can do. They will do what they call ratification. You keep the goods and reliable it to read that 20 millimeter so that you don't deceive the customers. The way these things happen, people don't see it from the positive angle. And so when a penalty is imposed on that, you don't have mouth when you have offended the law.
is when we get these uh, referrals, we we either take them to our warehouse, SOM warehouse, or we take it to the importer's warehouse because of the ease of doing business policy. We don't like keeping them, you know, delaying people at the ports. It's against the government policy. So we take it out from the ports, you know, then take it to our warehouse. Depending on the nature of the product, we can also say, okay, let's take it to the importer's warehouse and place it on hold. When we place it on hold there, we, we write a letter warning the importer that he should not tamper with that product until we finish our investigation. Our investigation is the test we're carrying out. Some of them complain, but you know, there are some people that don't want to obey the law. And it's very, very unfortunate that when someone places a consignment in an importer's premises on hold and give you that warning, strict warning, that you should not tamper with it, some people at times, you know, frontlandly go and tamper with the equipment, uh, the, the products, they can start re removing them one by one. Some even go and pack everything away. But you know that is a very, very serious offense. It's the same story at the land border where most agents feign ignorance of the content of the containers carrying goods and have also put the blame on importers who declare a particular good at the point of inspection abroad and stock the container with another kind of product. We declare based on what our importers is giving to us. We are licensed custom brokers. So custom is the one to determine the genuineness of our documentation. And when that one is satisfied, the truck is allowed to leave after scanning. Every of my container, every of my goods that are coming in now has some cap. And that's what, I don't have a problem with them. Although, out of 12, there must be a Judas. And I'm not saying that some people are not trying to do one or two to another. But majority are doing the right thing. The scanners, they have here always scan the trucks that came out from the border. And it is through these scanners that we're able to know the content of what it is in trucks. Of course, also, we also have our own intelligence information that guides us and help us. Because we can't do everything once at a go by ourselves to help us tell us what is in the content of those containers as they come out through the borders. This is what is prominent here in Seme border. Then when you talk of ED Roku, which is also part of my jurisdiction. Um, the scanner there is very faulty for a very long period of time. I tried to find out from the customs. They say that it is as a result of incomplete installation. We also have our own intelligence uh, people put in place to be able to guide us and let us know what is in each content of the truck as they're coming out. At least so that from there we can be able to succeed in whatever we are doing. So this is mainly for Seme border. But for Idi Roko, we have scanners there. But the scanners for a very long period of time, from my own uh, personal investigation, found out that they are faulty. I tried to find out from the custom they say it's as a result of incomplete uh, installation. But that is not part of our duties, their own duty. And the uh, majority of the work they do there is physical examination. And in both cases, both Seme and Idiroko, during the examination in both ways, our staffs participate in the examination, do the necessary quality control checks, pick their samples, and send it to the laboratory for confirmatory analysis to ensure that it conforms to relevant Nigerian industrial standards before being evacuated to the market. So these are the activities in both borders for now. Of escort, we escort most of the products that we examined. You know, to be sure of what they are carrying. Because of the scanning nature, sometimes we suspect. So we have to escort it you know, through the night and all that. So it's a challenge. We have a bad road, you know, very bad road. And um, you know, the people we work with too, their understanding is, is, is very low. They don't understand. So it's, so it's a challenge. So those are the, basically those are the things that we... You know, the, the agents, the agents, the agents, they don't want to, their own, Thinking is that they just come in, pick their, their goods, and go. They don't, they don't know the requirement. That's a procedure in place that we have put in place. When you tell them, since you, you know, sometimes they conceal in the truck. So, because of that, we want to escort it. So, sometimes we'll find it difficult, you know, 
Before you can do that, it will take one or two days. Our investigation also revealed that some importers are in the habit of using the import platform to access foreign exchange. A lot of them. So this for the creation, we are now studying it. We are studying it to find out why will somebody now use another agency's document be able to have access to forex. And at the end of the day, you bring in a product that belongs to another agency. So we are perturbed. The first declaration has to do with the human being. You know, that's why we discuss issue of compliance in the ports. That's the major problem. The standard operating condition are laid down rules. You look at the law that set up standard organization, they tell you what to do. If you don't do that, like I said, the consequences are high. So it's for you to approach them, but they are even coming to us. And I think Standard Organization is one of the agencies doing so well in terms of education and enlightenment. As opposed to what you get through other sister agencies. People need to understand and support them because SON regulation or operations means life. Means life. You look at the job they do, it's about the life of the Nigerians. So it's not about uh, SON, it's about all of us understanding that we need to do much to save lives. The Standards Organization of Nigeria has continued to make the process of clearance of goods seamless and less cumbersome in line with the federal government's resolve on the ease of doing business in Nigeria. The agency, under the leadership of Osita Boloma, has invested immensely in human capital and infrastructural development as the unscrupulous businessmen make frantic efforts to circumvent the system. Aboloma says the SON is not relenting on its oars to ensure substandard products do not find their ways to the shelves. He wants those who specialize in committing infractions to stop or risk losing their goods and face prosecution as prescribed by the SON Act No. 14 of 2015. You're still watching Standard and You. It's feedback time. Halimoto Sifo is our guide. Hello and nice to have you on the feedback segment of the program. I am Halimoto Sifo. Gani Lawani from Medugui says, I like this program. It's very educating. Thank you so much, Gani. Anonymous Messenger says, S-O-N, in as much as you do your work diligently, please beam your searchlight on steel companies. The standard of iron rods produced today in Nigeria has gone to zero. Please focus on them to avert building collapse in the country. Thank you so much for your contribution. We are also concerned about the standard of iron rods produced in Nigeria. We will continue to collaborate with stakeholders to ensure conformity with the available standards. Yusuf Muhammad from Kanu says, While I thank Son for a job well done, I also appeal to them to extend their crusade to manufacturers of mattresses. Thank you so much, Yusuf. We will take note of that. Dan from River says, we want to know why most electric bulbs do not last up to a week. It's because of the activities of the unscrupulous importers and manufacturers who are greedy and careless about consumers getting value for their money. However, Sun will ensure that consumers get value for their money and also read the market of substandard electric bulbs. Anonymous messenger says, please help us look into the issue of matches the number of sticks indicated on the pack does not tally with what is inside the pack. Imagine having 20 sticks instead of 40 sticks. This is public extortion. Thank you so much. We'll take note of that. Another anonymous messenger says, please provide us with a number to vigilantly notify you about substandard products in the remote parts of the country. Thank you. You can send in your information, questions, or complaints to the number 0705974 And that's it on the feedback segment of the program. Keep reaching out to us on Facebook at Standard and You, Instagram and Twitter at Standard and You underscore. You can also send a mail to the address the Standard and You at Gmail. Com. Remember, we have a vibrant YouTube channel where you can watch previous episodes online at youtube.com forward slash standard and you. Don't just view, like, share and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thanks and enjoy the rest of the week. <laughs>